Hello everyone. Today we're unraveling the mystery behind Russia's recent ban on Guy Ritchie's latest film. Now this isn't just any flick. We're talking about the much-anticipated The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, starring the Man of Steel himself, Henry Cavill. This film, based on the novel by Damian Lewis, tells the tale of a secret organization created by none other than Winston Churchill during the dark days of World War II. But here's the twist. Despite the buzz surrounding its release, the Russian Ministry of Culture has pulled the plug on its screening. The reason? While the ministry cited defects in documentation or scheduling conflicts with similar films, but as we all know, it's not always what's on the surface that matters. So we're left with the question, why did Russia ban this film? Now let's take a closer look at the movie itself. Guy Ritchie's latest film, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, is a cinematic adaptation of Damien Lewis's novel. The story revolves around a secret organization established by Winston Churchill during World War II. The movie is not your typical war story. It delves into the unorthodox and potentially controversial tactics used by this unit, pushing the boundaries of what we often perceive as warfare. The film also paints a vivid picture of the British government of the time, willing to employ any means necessary to ensure victory. This portrayal, while historically accurate to a degree, is not without controversy. It challenges the conventional image of the gentlemanly British warfare and questions the morality of the methods used in desperate times. Adding another layer to the controversy is the director himself, Guy Ritchie. Known for his unflinching storytelling and distinct cinematic style, Ritchie has never been one to shy away from contentious themes. But it's not just his movies that court, that court controversy. Ritchie's outspoken criticism of Russia's actions in Ukraine has also put him in the spotlight. His stance has made him a somewhat controversial figure, adding fuel to the fire of the film's contentious subject matter. Given these elements, it's not too surprising that the film has ruffled some feathers. The controversial themes, the stark portrayal of the British government, combined with Ritchie's own political stance have created a perfect storm. This movie, while a piece of entertainment, has become a symbol of larger political debates and historical narratives. But is this controversy enough to warrant a ban? Well, that's a question we'll explore further in the next segment. But there's more to this ban than just the movie's controversial themes. Let's not forget the power of narrative control. By banning the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, the Russian government is essentially controlling the historical narrative. The film tells the story of a secret organization created by Winston Churchill during World War II. It's a narrative that the Russian government might not want its citizens to engage with, perhaps due to its portrayal of the British government or the controversial tactics employed by this secret organization. Controlling narratives isn't something new. Governments, institutions, and individuals have been doing it for centuries. It's a way to shape public opinion, to guide the collective memory, and to influence the future. And this isn't the first time that the Russian government has exercised such control. In recent years, there have been several instances where films deemed controversial, or those that might disrupt the preferred narrative, have been banned. For instance, there's a recurring theme of restricting films with controversial themes or critical directors. This not only limits the range of stories that Russian audiences can engage with, but also ensures that the narratives align with the government's perspective. It's a powerful tool, one that can subtly shape the way people perceive the world around them. So, it seems that this ban is part of a larger pattern of narrative control. It's a reminder of how stories, whether they're told through books, films, or other mediums, aren't just entertainment. They're also a means of conveying ideas, shaping perceptions, and influencing the course of history. But who gets to tell these stories? And which versions of history do we get to see? Those are questions worth pondering. So what does this mean for the film industry and for viewers? Well, the implications are far reaching. For the industry, this ban is a reminder that art, especially cinema, is not just entertainment. It's a powerful tool that can challenge narratives, provoke thought, and even trigger governmental responses. For free speech, it's a stark reminder of the limitations that exist in certain parts of the world. As for my personal take on this, 
while respecting each country's right to govern its own cultural landscape, I see this as a missed opportunity for dialogue. A film, after all, is a reflection of its creator's perspective, not an absolute proclamation of truth. By banning a movie, we lose a chance to engage in meaningful discussions about the events it portrays. Whether it's the controversial subject matter or the director's political stance that led to this ban, it's clear that art and politics are inextricably linked. And while the debate over censorship versus protection of national narrative continues, one thing is certain, a film's power extends far beyond the screen. Whether you view it as unjustified censorship or a necessary measure, one thing's clear, this ban has stirred up a major debate. As we wrap up, it's important to remember that this isn't just about one movie. We've delved into the ban of Guy Ritchie's latest film, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, in Russia, and discussed the potential reasons behind it. From the controversial subject matter of the film, to Ritchie's political stance, and even the Russian government's desire to control the narrative. We've also touched on the precedent of film bans in recent years, and sparked a conversation on whether this is a case of unjustified censorship or a measure to safeguard national security. It's a complex issue that intertwines film, politics, and culture, and one that invites us all to think critically about the power of cinema and its impact beyond the screen. In a world where movies can be more than just entertainment, where they can stir discussions, challenge perspectives, and even clash with political ideologies, it's crucial to stay informed and open-minded. So let's continue the dialogue. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us for this exploration of film and politics. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one.